Hello everyone! Today we're going to be making a sticky toffee cake. I really need you today, what I'm saying. I'm going to be using a foil tray because I'm going to take this cake somewhere else afterwards and that will be taking it in a cake tin. So I'm going to bake it in this foil tray and this foil tray is 9 inches by 9 inches, okay? So it is the perfect size for this recipe because the cake, if you bake it in one single tin, it's going to be quite deep. It's going to be quite a thick cake. So basically probably the, about two inches or your cake tin is not that deep. Then you want to split the batter into two thinner tins rather than having it spill all over the place. I hope that's clear. So if you've got a regular cake tin, you'll need to grease and line it as well. Whereas with a foil tray, I don't need to line it, but I am going to grease it with some butter. So that is the greased tin. Put that to the side. The next thing we're going to do is boil water in our kettle. Fill your kettles up. Just We need about 360 mils, which is about a cup and a half. Just fill it up with some water and put it on to boil. Water is boiling. Um, we're going to prep our dates by removing the seeds. So an easy way is instead of getting five different bowls messy, put your scale underneath your large bowl that you're going to weigh your dates in and then put your scale on. Make sure that your scale is on zero and then you can start weighing your dates a little bit and you just basically need to continue adding your dates into the bowl until you reach 250 grams once you've removed the seeds, okay? So I've removed the seeds of some of these already. So let's just add them in. So you've got to make sure you remove the top part and the seed as well. You can actually buy dates that have the seeds already removed and already prepared. I think Home Bargain does pitted dates that you can get without the seeds in. So I've got slightly above 250 but that's absolutely fine to go a few grams up or down. It's absolutely fine. It's got 250 grams of dates which have had the seeds removed and the stem removed as well. So one milliliter of water weighs the same as one gram. So you just put your scale back on zero. There should be a tear button or a zero button on your scale which you can press. Make it go back to zero. And then you just want to slowly add in your boiling water until you reach 300 and just double check, yeah, 360 millilitres or grams on your scale. Okay. So add in your boiling water slowly, be careful, don't burn yourself. So once you've added in your boiling water to your dates, you're going to go ahead and add some baking soda or bicarbonate of soda. Level teaspoon of baking soda into your dates. Now this will also help soften up the dates as well. I'm going to give that a mix. And now we're just going to put this aside to let it soften up while we continue with the rest of the recipe to help it soften up. Now with the butter, I did leave mine out for a couple of hours, but because it's still cold, it's cold, it's still not soft enough. That's not soft enough to whip up. So I want to weigh it out into separate bowl and I'm going to just blitz it in the microwave for a few seconds. So we need 125 grams of butter and I'm using butter, not margarine for this recipe. You can use margarine as well, but it just, it has a nicer flavour with butter if you use butter instead. So we need 125 grams of butter. I'm just going to put it in the microwave for literally 10-15 seconds just to soften it up a little bit more. Yeah, that's perfect now. 10-15 seconds, it's basically softened up. Okay, so that's the texture that we want it to be at. Get a large bowl now. And then we can put our butter into our large bowl. Just want to use brown sugar so that it has a more caramelly kind of flavour in the cake rather than using regular granulated sugar. You could use regular granulated sugar as well if you wanted to, but just to help with the flavour to use brown sugar. 150 grams of sugar, so put your scale back to zero again. Slowly add in our sugar to 150 grams. Now if you're not confident about weighing in this way and you feel like you'd mess it up or add too much in, you can always weigh into a separate bowl. You don't have to weigh it directly into the bowl that you're mixing in. I'm just going to remove this scale because we're going to use the beater now. You want to get your electric mixer or stand mixer. You could have weighed this into your stand mixer bowl if you're going to use a stand mixer. So we're creaming the butter and sugar together. So creaming basically it, it creates air and it gives you your cake its nice soft texture. So the longer you cream, the softer your cake will be. Let's do that. It's 
So you can start in between and scrape the sides of your bowl just to make sure that you are mixing everything in really, really well. Okay, so as you can see, the texture of this has started to change. It's gone lighter, but we still want to beat it a little bit longer so it can go a bit more fluffier than this. Okay, that, sh that should be fine now. We've aerated it quite well. Okay, it's gone nice and light and aerated. So that's how you want it to be. Almost mousse-like. I'm gonna go ahead and add in our eggs. So we, I'm using large eggs. We need two large eggs. So we're gonna add them in one by one and mix in between each addition. So just crack your egg in, try not to get any shell in. Again, if you're worried about stuff like that, you can't always crack it into a separate bowl first. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> side for a second because we're going to talk about preheating the oven now for this cake we're going to preheat our ovens to 150 fan 170 if you don't have a fan and that is gas mark three we're going to come back to remember those dates that we boiled at the beginning get a fork and we're going to squish them we're going to squish the dates now you can do this in a food processor as well can blitz it in the food processor if that makes it easier that is it that's what we need it's like kind of like a date caramel looks like a little bit like that now so bring back your butter sugar and egg mixture you're going to go ahead and add in your dates to that and use the mixer and just blitz them through just to make sure they're mixed in well <laughs> scale back underneath our bowl so 250 grams of self-raising flour. So 250 grams. I like to just add it in into the same bowl slowly until I reach 250 grams. Again, you can wait separately if you prefer. I'm gonna also add cinnamon to mine. A teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm add less if you want to. So I'm gonna add about a quarter of a teaspoon, not mega well. A quarter of a teaspoon should be enough. And I'll just mix on low, just until the dry ingredients are combined and that's it, okay? So our batter is basically ready. I'm just going to use a spatula and just make sure we've got all those side bits mixed in. Pour all of it in. Just going to smooth it out until it's nice and level. Ready for, our, for the oven. So we're going to bake this in our preheated oven. We're going to bake it for 45, 50 minutes until if you poke a skewer in the middle, it comes out clean. Okay, it's important that that happens. Depending on the size of your tin, this might vary. So for some people, if you're splitting the batter into two shallow tins, it might take less time for it to bake. And if you're baking, you like, you know, if you're baking it in a bigger dish, then it might take a little bit less time to bake. So depending on what you bake it in, for this size, it will take roughly 45 to 50 minutes to bake at that temperature. All right. So we've got our cake in the oven and now it's time to move on to the toffee sauce or the caramel sauce, whatever you want to call it. And it's really, really easy to make and you can use this caramel sauce on other kinds of desserts as well. We need a scale again because we're weighing stuff out accurately over here. That is what we do. Okay, so you need a saucepan. You're just going to put your saucepan directly on top of your scale. Let's go in with 300 milliliters of cream. So this is already, as you can see, 300 Milliliters, so we just need to put all of that straight into our pan first of all. 200 grams of soft light brown sugar. And we're going to go in with our butter. Put your scale back on zero again. And then weigh in your butter. So salted butter, 65 grams. Also optionally, if you wanted to, you could add a teaspoon of vanilla extract into there as well, just to give it another dimension of flavour, but that's absolutely optional, you don't need to. So move over here to the stove, where I'm going to show you how to cook your caramel now. Okay, so you want to start off on a medium heat. It's basically going to stir it until it starts boiling and everything kind of melts together so stir everything together until everything melts and then it'll start boiling this is almost come to a boil now starting to bubble now i'm going to turn it down to a low so it's all the way down to low now and we're going to let it simmer for two minutes just like this 
and that's it then it's ready so we're going to let it simmer just like this for two minutes here is our delicious caramel sauce okay so that is once it's cooled a bit more it will be thickened up a little bit more and then it'll be ready to eat with the cake so you can just put your caramel sauce to the side until your cake is ready and then serve the cake serve the cake warm slice it up put pour some caramel over the top serve it with some ice cream vanilla ice cream and that is usually the best way to eat it And that's it from me today. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. If you do try this recipe, don't forget to send me pictures. Bye-bye.